so as far as uh, you know when the patient comes to us and we want to evaluate it and we uh, we go for management of such animals or such patients we have to consider you know the five you know which are the pillars of the diagnosis of the fluid abnormalities first we have to say see that what is the present state of hydration then we we have to see what is the electrolyte balance in the animal at that time you know then we have to see the acid base abnormalities or acid base balance then we must see the renal function the liver function also and the caloric balance that is what is the you know what is the you know caloric state in that animal at the time of examination so as far as the state of hydration is concerned we can have it through the history physical physical examination and the laboratory test as far as history is concerned we can see the you know on the history that that will tell us uh, what the owner of the animal tells you that the animal may be vomiting may be having diarrhea for the last you know so many days so on that basis we can you know guess the what type of acid base abnormality the animal should be suffering from such as if the history is that the animal suffering from vomiting so because during vomiting the animal will be losing hydrochloric acid which is the hydrogen ions and the chloride ions so the and the potassium ions as well so the animal we can guess that the animal will be suffering from you no know, metabolic alkalosis on the other hand if the there is the history of uh, diarrhea <clears throat> we know the in the diarrhea the animal will be losing carbo bicarbonates so in those cases uh, normally what happens is that the animal will be suffering from metabolic acidosis so on the basis of the history we can always guess what should be the abnormality in that animal however everything will be confirmed only on the laboratory test and the laboratory diagnosis the other thing is the physical examination so in physical examination uh, we normally see what uh, you know percentage of dehydration can be estimated this is just an estimate we you are not really very sure that how much dehydration is there if there is less percent dehydration we don't see any abnormalities in the animal if there is 5% dehydration there will be slightly doy inelasticity of the skin in if it is a 7% dehydration there will be definite inelasticity of the skin the crt or the capillary refill time may go up to 2 to 3 seconds whereas normal is less than 1 second we can see the you know the state of this uh, uh, capillary refill time by uh, giving a slight pressure over the gums or on the inside of the lips on the mucosa and when we give you know some pressure over the gums or on the lips the uh, it will become a little bit uh, it will become bleached but when we relieve the pressure the you know that pinkness or you know the water should or the uh, the blood should come back so if it comes back in less than 1 second it is normal but in dehydration it may take you know about 2 seconds or 3 seconds then there will be slight depression of the eye into the orbit in 7% dehydration if it is 10 to 12% dehydration there will be severe inelasticity of the skin the crt will be more than 3 seconds there will mark the sunken eyes or eyeballs the the indebilitated animals may be suffering from shock and you know there will be involuntary muscle twitching in such cases because 10 to 12% dehydration is too much dehydration <clears throat> if the dehydration is from 12 to 12 to 15% there will be marked shock and it is like an imminent death that is the animal uh, you can say it is uh, you know near death you know. as far as laboratory tests are concerned we will see the pcv pet cell volume in dehydrated animal pet cell volume will be more than normal similarly to total solids they will also be more than normal urine specific gravity of the blood and the urea we can see uh, in the absence of renal dysfunction 
the specific gravity should also become more in the hydration unit. So as far as fluid volume replacement is concerned, uh, we you know we must see at least three you know three pillars of the evaluation. One is we have to see the existing deficit as we can estimate from the history, lab test, and the physical examination. The maintenance needs we need they are about two milliliters per kg per hour. For, uh, for an animal. Then we have to see the continuing losses that if the animal is still vomiting or still having diarrhea, so we should also estimate that and we should also include it when we uh, want to find out the total fluid requirements of that animal. And then we have to see as a fourth thing the response of the patient to the fluid therapy, whether, whether it is, you know, you know, given good response or it is not given good response. So in this lecture, we have, uh, you know, talked about the fluid therapy and we have talked about uh, what are the four principles to, uh, to decide how much fluid is needed for a particular animal suffering from dehydration. In the next lecture, we will, you know, take some example of a dog suffering from the, uh, from dehydration and we will calculate how much fluid is needed and what type of fluid will be needed in specific uh, conditions the dog is suffering from.